Moving forward, and we are now on to number eight, and that is Hitman Absolution. Now, compared to the older games, Hitman Absolution, I feel, went in the right direction to me. Because the older games were kind of, they were hard to complete in a really good way. Like, it was really, really challenging. I don't mean challenging as in a fun challenging. I mean challenging as in a, you do all of this and then some random thing occurs that's really hard and it just gets really annoying really fast. That's kind of what the old Hitman games were. And while they were fun and hilarious in certain ways, it just, they got, uh, that's pretty much all I can say about that, it got kind of, uh, but Hitman Absolution I feel really helped itself in certain ways. I mean, it didn't really have some good parts of it, but it did have some really, really, really good parts of it. And those parts were mainly the story and the way everything worked. All the sort of different mechanics of the game uh, really helped it progress as a, a game. And I, I know lots of hardcore fans of the old series hate it and stuff like that, but I just think they went in the right direction. It was a lot more action-y, I'd say, in the terms of it was quite linear action, like when it's when you were supposed to have loads of action, that it it do it. Like I don't think there was a point where it was complete, complete stealth. I think there was one part where you had to just completely blow the hell out of everyone. I'm not sure, I may be just spitballing here with that. But the uh, first thing I want to touch upon is the stealth. Now, the stealth was pretty much the same as any Hitman stealth mechanic. You just crouch and you hope not to get seen. But I'll, the way they did it was uh, they made it more uh, modern day, I'd say. Because, you know, in the old games it was really a matter of you just you seen and that's it line of sight and you're done. It was that little meter in the corner. But with Absolution, it had this sort of um, sight thing. So if, so the more someone saw you, the more this sight thing would show you, like in the corner. And it would sort of like start flashing if they've properly seen you. But if they seen something and they go to investigate, it'll sort of like, they'll be alerted and it'll have a sign for that. So I liked that. I liked how um, they changed it up from... Uh, being more about their line of sight rather than, oh, they, they, they've they seen you anyway, that's it. Yeah, Dead. And another thing was, they didn't make uh, Agent 47 invincible, pretty much. Because in the old games, you could get shot up quite a lot, whereas in this one, take a few hits and you're dead. So it really helped to make being quiet and being stealthy that more important than in previous ones because in previous ones you could probably get a gigantic machine gun and go running through the level shooting up everyone and still have about half of your health left and then there's pickups for health as well whereas in this one you couldn't really do that and it awarded being stealthy now it, the, I think the only rewards you had in the previous one for being stealthy was you know you just get a silent assassin rating whereas in Absolution you had rewards for being stealthy, like I think you unlocked new guns and new weaponry for different parts of the game and different uh, modes in the game. And so it just made being stealthy very rewarding. And also another thing it had was uh, when you tried to kill someone or do an objective, it had a little uh, side thing. You could do it in different ways. You could, And you'd get points for doing it in these different ways and it rewarded you for doing it in these different ways and that was really good because it, uh, it mixed up the gameplay, it made you do something different because you could go back and uh, try and snipe said uh, assassin target from far away or you could poison his food and you'd get different amount of points for how you uh, completed each of those tasks and so it really made it quite a replayable game in a sense as well, that you could go do this over a different amount of times to see how many ways you could kill this person. And I don't think there was even, you know, I don't think you even had to kill them as well. I think there was a thing that you could uh, pop them away, kind of like Dishonored, where you just pop them away and they disappear. I'm not sure. I think I think you had to kill them outright. I think there was no other choice, but I, 
in the back of my mind, it's saying there is something that you could have done to uh, prevent killing them. Uh, and apart from that, you know, you had all these little gameplay mechanics like hiding in bins and stuff, and and also the disguises as well. The disguises are back, and they were pretty good. I like the way they did that because in in previous Hitman's uh, disguises kind of worked as in you know you could just go around anywhere as a guy because you would if you were say you took the disguise of a gardener on in a mansion estate pretty much everyone around you would not be able to detect that you aren't really a gardener but you just had to sort of stay away from them you couldn't just stay around them too long because you'd arouse suspicion whereas in this one you could dress up as a gardener and everyone but gardeners would notice you quite quickly. You could just walk by gardeners like like just a flash. They wouldn't even notice you're there. But if, a, a, say, a policeman sees you, he'll be able to see through that disguise. So they, they really worked out that disguise problem. I say it's a problem because it kind of was. It was kind of too easy to go around if you found a disguise. Whereas disguises are everywhere now, but it's kind of harder. You have to get the right disguise instead of just finding one that suits everything. So they they did that well. Now onto the story. The story was uh, a favourite part of mine. I really enjoyed the story. I kind of got into it. I was really, uh, you know, rooting for 47 to get his job done. And I'm not really going to reveal much of the story. I'll just reveal the sort of the summary of it is that Agent 47 is like no longer part of the company or something. He's now like his own guy, something like that, doing his own things. And so he sort of just goes along with that and he has to protect a girl and uh, that's pretty much the premise of the story, I'd say. Kind of a summary without giving much away, but I really enjoyed it because in the end I felt... Uh, I felt satisfied and that's a big thing with me if I'm satisfied with the end of the game then it's a good game to me and the story really allowed me to be satisfied because it was really interesting in the way it played out as being now Agent 47 being with the company for so long and now suddenly he's rogue and then having to protect this girl I mean an assassin being sincere and caring. Oh god, that's a bit weird. And uh, so, when it all came together and everything came full circle, it was really, it was really cool, and I really liked the way they ended it. And uh, I think that's pretty much all I've got to talk about for Hitman Absolution. So yeah, number eight.